Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be diving into like a really powerful and honestly kind of underrated mandibular block, which is um, the Gao Gates technique. So this is one of those injections that uh, once you get the hang of it, it really makes your clinical life a lot easier, especially when you're aiming for like full mandibular quadrant anesthesia with more uh, consistent success. So yeah, let's go through how it works, how to actually perform it, and um, what really sets it apart from the other mandibular blocks out there. So like first off, what exactly does the Gao Gates block anesthetize? Well, uh, it's designed to like target the mandibular nerve before it even branches. And that means you're um, ideally getting all the mandibular teeth on that side, plus like the periodontum, the gingiva from the molars all the way up to the midline, the lingual soft tissues, and even uh, like half the tongue. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the buccal soft tissue over the molars, it's um, kind of inconsistent. In most cases, like around 75% of the time, it does get numb, but the buccal nerve is, you know, super variable in its path. So you should always uh, double check that area before starting any work. And there's like this cool bonus with the Gao Gates. It often catches the mylohyoid nerve too, which is um, actually super helpful because in some patients, that nerve can like supply part of the mandibular first molar. So if you're using other blocks and missing it, uh, that can definitely mess with your anesthesia. So people sometimes compare this to the inferior alveolar nerve block, right? Cause it's like kind of aiming at the same general region, but there are um, definitely some key differences. One major thing is that the injection is placed like way higher, closer to the neck of the condyle. So the anesthetic actually reaches the nerve trunk before it splits. And uh, that's one of the reasons it can be more reliable in some cases. Now, technique wise, um, a successful Gao Gates block really starts with good patient positioning. Like the patient has to open wide and just uh, keep it open the whole time, not just for comfort, but like because it's actually essential. When the mouth is wide open, the condyle rotates forward, which um, brings the mandibular nerve into a more accessible spot. If your patient can't stay open comfortably, uh, uh, definitely consider using a bite block or like a mouth prop. It helps uh, both of you a lot. So to get your orientation, you'll wanna um, find a couple of key landmarks. Internally, your thumb or your index finger should rest in the coronoid notch to help retract the tissues. And externally, you can like, use the intertragic notch of the ear, it lines up kind of nicely with the neck of the condyle, which is um, basically your target for the anesthetic. Then uh, you apply your topical anesthetic just distal to the maxillary second molar around the height of the mesiolingual cusp. That's also like your needle insertion point. While the topical's working, you'll be getting your syringe ready, right? You'll be using like a 25 or 27 gauge long needle for this. Now, uh, angulation is super important here. You want to align the barrel of the syringe like over the opposite premolars. So if you're anesthetizing the lower left, then um, your barrel goes toward the right corner of the mouth. Insert the needle just distal to the upper second molar and like follow a slightly upward path, almost like the takeoff angle of a plane. That imaginary line you're aiming along goes from the mouth's corner to the inner tragic notch. And like don't forget, your patient's mouth has to stay open this whole time. As you're advancing the needle, your goal is to contact bone, the neck of the condyle, at around uh, 25 millimeters in depth. Feeling bone is like a good thing. It means you're in the right spot. You don't want to be in the parotid gland or anything. So um, yeah, bone is good. If you don't feel bone, first thing is like check that the patient's mouth is still fully open. If they're relaxing, just ask them to uh, reopen fully. You might also have to adjust your barrel a bit more toward the molars to get a better trajectory. Once you hit bone, you'll aspirate uh, just to make sure you're not in a vessel and then slowly deposit your anesthetic. After that, uh, have your patient stay upright and keep their mouth open for another couple of minutes. That lets the anesthetic like really bathe the nerve trunk while it's still in that ideal position. Usually, um, patients start to feel numb within about five minutes. And while you wait, it's a good time to like set up your tray or finish charting or whatever. Now, let's quickly go through some pros and cons. So one major advantage is the like super high success rate. 
since the anesthetic is being placed near the main nerve trunk, you're blocking like multiple branches at once, which reduces the chance of missing um, accessory nerves like the mylohyoid. There's also a much lower chance of positive aspiration compared to like the standard inferior alveolar nerve block. And you also have uh, less risk of complications like trismus or hematoma. But um, yeah, there are a few drawbacks. This technique takes a bit of practice and like beginners often give up on it way too early. Also, since the nerve fibers are more bundled at this level, it can um, take a little longer for full anesthesia to kick in. You might need to wait or even use a bit more anesthetic. And yeah, getting your patient to keep their mouth open the whole time can be a bit of a struggle unless you like prep them well. That said, once you're comfortable with the gal gates, it's honestly a game changer. You get broader coverage, fewer injections, and it's um, a great option in cases where like your usual mandibular block just doesn't cut it. All right, thanks for sticking around for this walkthrough. If this was helpful, uh, go ahead and give the video a like, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll um, catch you in the next one.